As I have pointed out before, Tony Cartellucci's main focus, the purpose of his work, is to divert attention away from Israel. The sections on his website are quite interesting. Obviously, he doesn't have a page for Israel, but he does have one for Thailand. But why is Thailand of such interest to him? Thailand is not really the focus of many other people's work. So actually, this is one point where he is being original, coming up with all this rubbish about Thailand. So, Tony Cartellucci is focusing on Thailand, ignoring Israel, of course. His main job is to divert attention away from Israel. So, what's the connection between Thailand and Israel? Jews have lived in Thailand for a couple of hundred years. Apparently there are only about 300 permanent resident Jews in Thailand. But this small group has had a massive impact. For example, they set up the stock exchange in Thailand. While America has been legally bound to stop military aid to Thailand, Israel has not. They have not made any statements about stopping their military relations with Thailand because of the coup. Thailand uses Israeli military aircraft. There's been a long-term Israeli involvement in the south of Thailand. They have signed a non-disclosure agreement. So you can't really get much more information on what their ties are, because it's all a secret. Even the guys in the photos have their faces blurred out, because it's a secret. What is not a secret is that Israel wants a pivot in Asia. Cartellucci goes on about the American pivot in Asia. Well, the Israelis have it too. And like America, this presence in Asia is not just about trade, it is highly political. The politics of Thailand are very special in Asia. Whereas many other countries in the region, a large Muslim population, Thailand doesn't. And whereas most other countries in the region would support Palestine over Israel, and be anti-colonial, Thailand is not. So Thailand is much more of a natural ally to Israel than other countries in the region. Jacob Abadi has a very good book on this topic. In it, he details the relationship between Israel and Thailand from the beginning of Israel as a modern state. There are some very interesting points in there, very interesting facts. Everybody knows the American government used Thailand as a base from which to export heroin. That's well documented. A couple of movies made about that too. But it's not such common knowledge that Mossad were doing the same thing. And it makes you wonder, you know, taxing, getting rid of the drug dealers, the drug trade, all of that. I'm sure it pissed off some uh, powerful people. But the most important point in that book, I think, is something someone wrote about Thailand and the Thai people. But before I give you that quote, I'd also like to tell you about Taksin, Taksin's government, through Yinlak, recognizing the state of Palestine. Just before they recognized the state of Palestine, there were these uh, terror bombings in Bangkok. Just uh, another thing to think about. Was that related? A quote from Norman Jacobs goes, The Thai ruler exercises an absolute rule and his decisions remain unchallenged. He decides on all matters and ignores those who disapprove of his policies. Although the leader's attitude is paternalistic and compassionate, compliance with his decisions is rewarded while challenges to his decision are severely punished. 
According to this analysis, the patrimonialistic leader maintains control by various administrative measures, which include the use of force and espionage. The patrimonialistic leader does not allow resistance in any form, and when opponents rise, they are normally removed from power. It goes on to say this explains the absence of powerful opposition to cordial relations with Israel. What was true then is still true today. Basically, Taksin was an opponent. He became too big for his boots and he was removed from power. This is the Thai way. Nothing to do with American or Israeli or Chinese or any other foreign interference. Coups are the norm in Thailand. People talk about going back to a state of normalcy. This is a state of normalcy. This is how Thai people, this is how Thai society operates. And while Thailand does vote in the way Israel and America ask it to in UN meetings, it is interesting to know from WikiLeaks, American diplomats, ambassadors, complain about Thailand that they don't pick up the phone. <laughs> they are not that well organized. They are not as efficient to certain Western countries in their government, in their external relations. They're not that interested in foreign embassies. It's quite a recent phenomenon. Traditionally, they would welcome foreigners into their country but they weren't that interested in getting involved in foreign affairs. And I think that really answers who was behind the coup. Was America behind the coup? Was uh, America behind taxing this, that, the other? Well, it was a Thai coup. It was Thai people, the Thai leaders, the real leaders, dealing with who they consider to be an upstart. There is no doubt. Israel and America have a major interest in Thailand. As I pointed out before, Thailand is a very special country in the region. This can be seen in the book I quoted earlier. There's a lot of interesting information there about how it differs from other countries in the region and is a much better ally to Israel and America. Next year, in 2015, ASEAN will become ASEAN EC, AEC. And again, Thailand is crucial in that. Thailand will be the heart of this economic group. It sits in the center of the North South Corridor and the East West Corridor. Most likely, the Thai baht will be the regional currency. So, if you want to have influence in ASEAN, you've got to have influence in Thailand. As I said before, the coup was really a Thai coup. It was an internal affair. Israelis, Americans, others are interested in Thailand, obviously. But what is interesting is something stated quite honestly by the Thai ambassador in Canada. He said it doesn't matter if Thailand is ruled by a military, if it's ruled by this political party or that political party, the economic policies remain the same. The recent government was called criminal because of certain economic policies and, and all of this. And if you look at what the coup leaders have done, they're continuing with the previous government's policies. Okay, These economic policies are Thailand's policies regardless of whether it's a military government, an elected government, an appointed government. Um, I think the business community and those people who understand Thailand very well know that uh, this kind of thing uh, is quite uh, separate from the um, economic dynamisms that the country uh, is endowed with. So the military comes and go, elected, non-elected government comes and go, but the fundamental thing is the economic policy had never changed. That's a good thing. All right, Ambassador, we appreciate you coming in and clarifying all that. I found this out when I was looking at the Israeli Foreign Office, uh, the, the Israeli Foreign Department's website, searching for news about Thailand. And the people they have their meetings with, they don't really have meetings with the politicians who are elected, the politicians who come and go. 
They have their meetings with permanent secretaries, the civil service, the people that Israel and America have their meetings with, the people that Israel and America do their deals with. They're the same. So in conclusion, I still have no clue why Cartolucci concentrates on Thailand and comes up with this lopsided, clearly biased nonsense, most of it. Like this thing with the, the three fingers coming from Ukraine. It's totally absurd.